Hey, I'm Marcus. 80s film buff, idealist, hacker. And this, this is my home. All I ever wanted was right here. From the city to Oakland. Marin to Silicon Valley. The entire Bay Area is a playpen for counterculture. Free spirits setting the new norm decades ahead of time. Just take your curiosity for a walk. Or a ride. It starts with reality. With martial arts, it always starts with reality. It doesn't mean we cannot be imaginative or all of that, but in reality, hacking and people who break systems are pretty creative, naturally. So we want to inspire ourselves from them. This is a big moment for us in production. Basically, all the parts of the game are colliding together for the first time. And for the past months, we've been able to play the game from beginning to end. So now we see how things are coming together, and you could almost say the game has a life of its own at this point. When you finish a game after almost five years, you, you need to sleep on it a little bit. Then afterwards, what's exciting is when you start really understanding what you tried to do with the first game, what went well, what went less good, and also uh, what the players have said. So Watch Dogs was, first of all, a new IP, which is a big deal. It means that you start from almost nothing. I think the new idea in Watch Dogs 1 was to talk about an hyper-connected society, something that was uh, becoming very important in our day-to-day -day lives. Chicago was one of the most surveilled cities in North America, so we talked a lot about cameras and surveillance and being watched. When you played Watch Dogs, you probably played something you never played before because the city was sort of alive. People were not just people walking around the street, but you could hack into their lives and you could exploit them. You could see their secrets. You could manipulate the city, the bridges and the steam pipes and the traffic lights. What we basically created with Watch Dogs 1 was a, a playground where everything was connected. So finally shipping the game. Well, a lot of people were happy and excited. We also got a lot of feedback and we listened to that feedback. I personally spent months reading forums and reading all of the player feedbacks I could see on the web. We wanted to know what people felt and what they wanted to get from the game and what we could improve in the future. At that point, we knew we were gonna make a Watch Dogs 2. We felt like we really did a big milestone with the original Watch Dogs. But with Watch Dogs 2, we could really deliver on the fantasy of being a hacker. This time around, we're in San Francisco. For us, San Francisco struck the chord because it meant the very birth of the attitude of a hacker. For the setting of Watch Dogs 2, we wanted to have a different vibe. So our San Francisco keeps all the important parts of the Bay Area. And there's a different feel, different vibe, a different look to all of the areas of our world. We wanted to kind of represent all these different areas and the different collections of people that live in these areas and what their lifestyles and their personalities are like. So we're building a game where basically it's almost a simulation. You're in that world, and if you stop moving and you look around, you feel the world is alive, right? This is the promise of what an open world game is. We broke the feeling that the world is centered on you, the player. So characters shouldn't only react to you, they should react to each other. You know, maybe people start fights. Maybe someone calls the cops on someone else than you. Maybe a dog barks after someone else and chases him down the street. You need to feel as if this city is alive, even if you do nothing. And then if you start doing things, if you start playing in the world, the city should react to what you're doing. It should feel normal. It should surprise you also in how it reacts. We were really interested in the city itself. It almost feels like the Wild West of technology, and how, would, you know, how couldn't you set something in the Wild West of technology? 
it's a world that has a lot of potential for gameplay. I mean, if you're a hacker and you go in Silicon Valley and you have the head office of some of the biggest tech company in the world, what will you do? Can you hack into those places? What will you find? So it's a very intriguing setting for a hacker who's exploring the world. So as we're crafting this world, we're putting in it all of the factions that should be in it. So for example, we have various criminal groups trying to fight over the underground of the city. We also have corporations trying to make money and potentially even manipulate people and society. And we also have other groups of hackers trying to tap into the technology that has been set up in the city. Once again, CTOS, the smart city system that was in the first Watch Dogs, is installed in San Francisco. And various people are trying to tap into it to exercise control, power, or to try to make money. I think one of the challenges, first of all, the Bay Area is gigantic. So it's really big. You cannot like put it, it all into the game. So you have to pick the best spots. So I think what the team did really well is they identified those landmarks, like Sutro Towers and everything. And then they started to craft the city, making sure that we align those things properly. Because if you start cutting entire district or shrinking down to two streets, like uh, something that's gigantic, you don't want to make the feeling wrong. So I think they did an amazing job at looking at going into a certain area, looking at the vistas from the Marine County, where's the bridge is aligned with where we are right now, and then going on another area, and then making sure that from that area they understand the alignment with a few compromises that people could, uh, could understand if they really live in the city. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they did a spectacular job to make sure that the, the point of references are there. And then it gets to the street level. Well, the Golden Gate Bridge was one of the challenging ones for us. Oh, yeah. Like, the real bridge is gigantic. So, uh, when you get from Marine County and you look at it, like, for us, it was, uh, okay, we're gonna have to scale up a lot. Like, uh, I'm not a huge fan of making big well just for the sake of making them big. Mm -hmm. But when we walked in here and look at the Bay Area and the bridge and how the vistas with uh, Alcatraz and everything was going on, I said, okay, if we, if we don't, like, at least double the size of our game, it's going to be laughable when we're going to build that. Like, like we need to have those vistas right. In creating a hero for Watch Dogs 2, we wanted somebody new, somebody that could embody uh, the spirit of California and the spirit of San Francisco. But we needed somebody who was going to be really worthy of all the cool stuff that we wanted to do in the game. So, our hero in Watch Dogs 2 is Marcus Holloway. He's a young hacker, very brilliant in what he does because of the injustices that he's seen both being from Oakland and also having been profiled the wrong way and being accused of a crime he actually didn't commit. That sort of made him go against the system. In terms of visual, we always try to create uh, iconic attributes to the character so that he can be memorable and people want to play him but still feels credible inside our world. He's a perfect blend between somebody that's tech savvy, that represents a little bit the internet culture, but also has uh, that, that athletic and rebellious feeling to him. You meet Marcus Holloway in the story. He's a young hacker who is, for the first time, having a sort of sense of community and family with other hackers. Marcus is a programmer, self-taught. He's passionate, he's a fighter. His personality is a lot of fun. Uh, I think he's just been cool.
Marcus is somebody that was raised in Oakland. At the beginning of the game, he hacks into a system, and you see he's got a profile, right? All these labels are pushed upon him because of where he's from, his family's history. The system has said, this is who he is, and he's fighting against it. Marcus is fighting against injustice at its very essence, at the core of everything, and he just wants everything to be fair. It's about our loss of privacy. It's about our loss of control over our own lives. It's even worse than he thought it was. And because of this, he knows he needs more power behind him. And uh, a way to do that is to find a group of like-minded people with the same skill sets to work together to fight against the system. DedSec is a worldwide organization, but for us, we're dealing specifically with the cell that's in San Francisco because DedSec is many voices. Marcus comes along because he's looking for the right group, and what's wonderful about DedSec in San Francisco is the diversity. Oh, by far, Marcus's closest friend in the game is the wrench. Wrench is the resident uh, engineer and also problem solver. He's the demolition man, you know, if you need anything blown up or like, he, he's gonna go out and create some anarchy. He just likes getting into trouble. He wants to get into a good fight. My character is Satara. She's a rebel. She's playful, but she's also very serious. She, she has purpose. Satara, she likes to do graffiti and all types of artwork. She's the one responsible for uh, creating all the visuals that DeadSec is going to use, so it really becomes more memorable. She's looking to change things through her art, through her message. She wants to engage people mentally. And then we also have Josh, who I think is very much our human connection. Josh is in the group, not very outspoken, but when he does, he has something important to say, and often inappropriately so. He's the brain. He's, he's the coder. Anything tech heavy, he's going to do it and figure it out. This guy can hack through anything. He can bypass any firewall. They're not trying to take down society. They're good people who are trying to do something right and trying to discover something and just curious. We see the evolution of the group itself throughout the game. And it's their sort of connection and journey together that drives the rest of the game forward. I think anybody can relate to the joy that Marcus brings to the missions and also the passion that he brings to it. He still has fun. He represents the fun aspects of the hacker culture. He does parkour, he's got drones, he's driving with his phone. I wish I could do that. People are really gonna relate to the fire underneath the engine when Marcus gets started and he's trying to finish something. So we had to decide from the beginning what things were comparable between Aiden and, and Marcus and what things would be different. We focused on parkour. We wanted Marcus to be a lot better at parkour than Aiden. And we're not talking about just like climbing on things, but like being able to like flow and chain moves together. So he's a pretty good fighter, but he's got some interesting quirks too. Uh, he's a more expressive guy. Oh. We tried, really tried hard to figure out what kind of melee weapon Marcus we had. We tried a whole bunch of things, and some things were pretty cool, and some things just didn't work at all. We did a lot of research, and we, we basically did what Marcus would have done. We went onto the internet, and we started watching videos, and started reading websites, and trying to figure out what kind of stuff we could make. Pr pretty much all the stuff that you probably shouldn't search at work. In the end, what we stumbled across was this idea of taking a billiard ball and attaching it to a paracord lanyard. And we took this, and we handed this to the stunt team, and the first thing that we saw was it was fast. It was so fast that like we couldn't believe how fast they were swinging this around their body. And then as soon as I saw this video, I'm like, this is crazy. We, we got it. Well, in Watch Dogs 2, we brought in a lot more toys and things to play with because we wanted to embrace the maker culture. DedSec have these really interesting, intricate guns. They're built on a 3D printer. Basically, the cutting edge technology of 3D printing, which is actually uh, building it with metal. He's also got this really cool taser. So if you want to play the game completely non-lethal and not actually kill anybody, you can totally do that. We're playing with a lot more uh, crafted items and a, a lot more of little devices that you can use. One of the things that people kind of like that we've done, they really like what we've done, is we've created toys for Marcus. He has an RC jumper. It's got little wheels, and it's even got this little robotic arm that he can sort of deploy, and he can interact with things. He can unplug things and replug them and take out screws. It's a neat little toy. And then the other gadget he's got is this quadcopter. 
And it's more about scouting and being the eye in the sky. First person view on it is incredible because you're just zipping through the city. It feels like you're flying. Well, you are flying. Now for, uh, for our next game. Protected if democracy thrives. The corporate interests are rigging the elections. Your elections. Your favorite social media giant, Invite, knows everything about you. And they're manipulating your feed to tailor your opinion to their interests. They are fooling you into voting for their puppet, Congressman Mark Russ. Invite wields the single most powerful population control tool ever created. Defend democracy. Help us tear down an invite. Let us your processing power by downloading our app and together, we will expose Congressman Thrust. Join us. We are dead set. I'm Ruffin Prentice. I'm the actor that voices and plays Marcus Holloway in Watch Dogs 2. My name is Tasia and I play Sitara. John Tansh here. I play T-Bone Grady. Sean Bates here. I play Wrench. My name is Jonathan Dubsky. I play Josh. I just wanted to send a huge thank you to all the fans. You guys are so talented when it comes down to all the artwork that we've received, all of the cosplay that we've seen at, at all of the conventions. Just wanted to take a second and thank the amazing community online all the fans of Watch Dogs 2 for your love and support. Um, I wanted to give a special shout out to Laura Mercer and Vinay for their incredible Watch Dogs 2 artwork. A very special shout out to Bone Daddy for his awesome Josh cosplay. Shout out to all the great fan art and through all you guys, through Van Aid, Miyanaka, so many great artists, man, and we appreciate it and I'm honored to be able to work with you. You guys are so passionate and generous and talented and I love seeing all this awesome fan art. And let me just give a little shout out to the Sitara cosplayers out there. And thank you so much. Mwah. A few shout outs to some people I've met on Twitter. I've been enjoying their artwork. Uh, Jilly Bean, Sazienas, Trenchy Coat, Angie as well. Thank you so much for all your artwork. Another shout out, Nami Yami, for this amazing piece of artwork that I'm using as my screensaver on my iPad. And also to Red Opasta for um, their amazing work. And I'm using their uh, artwork here. Love this piece. I speak on behalf of the whole Watch Dogs team when I say that we're excited for you to finally get your hands on the game. I was super impressed by the reaction of the fans for the character Wrench. Uh, not even 24 hours after the release of the character, you guys were online trying to do schematics and like reverse hack the, the, the glasses. Thank you all to the super fans out there and the creators of content. But you believed in us. We want to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts. So a shout out goes to you. Every single one. Whichever activity you do, we're going to make sure you get rewarded to get you closer to the end game. That's kind of the promise we're making to gamers. You, you always know it when something starts to click and starts to work. Everything changes. You stop seeing individual components, animations, or, or texture maps, or vehicles. You just start to see the experience as a whole. It changes on the floor. People get excited about it. This is it. It exists. We are always making the game with the player in mind. They have always been the driving force. When you come with a sequel that really earns its two, you know, that really does a lot of new things, that has a lot of surprises, it's a great feeling. In the end, there's nothing more accurate than this. Looking at something, trying to understand it, Solely for f***ing up with this system. I have friends that would love to put dead sec behind bars. You're fighting a war no one gives a shit about. You're so aggressive, so indignant. Oh, 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 and there's a warrant out for your arrest. To say the truth, tell the entire truth. We will not be lied to. We undeniable. We will not be afraid. We will not be silent. It's time we stand together.